joining us now is human rights activist Dorotin Jamanze. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. How can Nigeria and Nigerians do better with protecting uh, the girl child? Simply by identifying the girl child as a human being with, you know, as um, an emotional being with human rights. That's what we want. That's what we've been demanding. And that's what we will not stop demanding. Of course, girl, the girl child will grow into a woman. And so if we start from when she's a child breaking her, then it means that <laughs> we're not helping the situation. It means that we're, we're not investing enough in our future. You know, and so how can Nigeria help the girl child? And Nigeria can, as a matter of urgency, domesticate the Child's Rights Act, the Violence Against Persons Prohibition Act, and also ensure that there's adequate budgeting uh, for implementing the, these acts. Nigeria can ensure that there's special courts dedicated to, you know, trying these cases of sexual and gender-based violence, which predominantly affects the girl child. It's very important. We cannot um, underestimate the importance of this. Nigeria can also, as a matter of urgency, you know, strengthen the support system, the response protocols, you know, that supports victims of sexual and gender-based violence. Let's talk about the protest that was um, held today. This is not the first time, and I expect it's not going to be the last of protests um, on the issue. What do you hope to achieve specifically, aside what you've just enumerated, with the immediacy of the protests? Yeah, we're, t we're tired of the protests, we're tired of the hashtags, we're tired of the photo ops. We want a state of emergency to be declared in Nigeria on sexual and gender-based violence. That's we. We understand, we would know that the government cares for us. We would know that the government understands our plight. And when that happens, what do we expect? Appropriate, um, definite milestones will be, will, be, um, will be mapped out for us to reach. And so we can tell, OK, by a social month, uh, all states in Nigeria should have domesticated so, 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 and so. By social period of time, all states in Nigeria should clearly have got, you know, de a defined pathway of funding, uh, the implementation of the different laws. By social period of time, all states in Nigeria should have sexual assault referral centers, and the sexual assault referral centers should be fully equipped. We should have forensic labs, at least in all the geopolitical uh, zones in Nigeria. We need to be serious about these things. We've taken it for granted for too long, and lives are being lost every day. Guess what? The lives are lives of human beings. Children, women, you know, we are human beings. Men are also affected, but the prevalence is more with the women and the children. Okay, the, the, there is two cases. I, I know of the one in Kogi State. Um, I think we had that exclusive conversation with the victim at some point. And then we have the case of Ua, who unfortunately uh, was killed after she was brutally attacked. The IGP has taken over that case. What are your expectations as regards the speediness at which justice will be served in both cases? I totally appreciate that the Inspector General of Police has come on board now and taken over the um, investigation of this case. But I'd like to remind all of us that when cases, I mean, if it's on grounds of security reasons, for instance, like the Kogi case, that the case is moved to Abuja, um, I'm more understanding about those than when cases could have been solved in the different individual states, even with the intervention of the Inspector General of Police. So I look forward to having the police have, you know, more strengthened systems at the state levels, you know, for access to justice. It's very, very, very important. It cannot be underestimated. Nonetheless, with what is happening, of course, especially with the gender unit of the Nigerian police force thus far, um, I'm very confident that a lot would come out of this. We hope that if there were a proper forensic lab and everything, we would have been able to process the, the crime scene better. But all hope is not lost. Um, there are a couple of people I work with in that department very effectively, and I have quite some confidence in them, you know, at least in the meantime. All right. Speak quickly as, uh, and as briefly as you can um, on the issue of enlightenment. There seem to be a lot of it, but there still seem to be a lot of 
unenlightened persons when it comes to the issue of rape, particularly of minors. So where are we and where should we be aiming to be, the, the male child as well? On enlightenment, we are very we are far cry away from where we should be. Many people do not know basics. Many people do not know consent. Many people do not know um, respect for individuality. Many people do not know diversity. Many people do not know restraints. Many people do not know self-control. There are so many things that we need to reorientate people in. We also need to reorientate people in languages that are not just plain English, which we are speaking now. Imagine if we told the consent story in, the, in all the languages in Nigeria. More people would understand it better. And so the National Orientation Agency needs to step up to the, you know, to the occasion and ensure that the appropriate messages are told. Non-governmental organizations like us are on standby and happy to help with the process, but we need to see some degree of commitment and responsibility from the government. All right, thank you very much for the work that you do and for sharing your time with us after the busy day that you've had. Thank you for having me, Anne.